Completed in September 1891, the Victoria Theatre is the oldest theatre building still standing in New South Wales. When it opened, the Newcastle Morning Herald reported, no expense has been spared in making the theatre the most complete, comfortable and handsome structure of its size and description in Australia. The structure is the finest of its class and size in the country. The Victoria was a magnificent example of late 19th century theatre architecture and design. But after many interior makeovers and alterations, knowledge of how the theatre originally looked has been lost. This project recreates the Victoria as it was when it first opened. Would you know the way I'm feeling? Listening and I will tell you. The south entrance on Perkins Street led to the front stalls and the dress circle. In order to avoid crowding as audiences arrived and left the theatre, the halls were wide and the staircases described as being of an easy grade. The building was comprised of three parts, a first-class hotel on Perkins Street, the theatre auditorium directly behind the hotel, and then the stage. James Henderson, the city's architect, drew up the plans and specifications for the four-storey building and the new Victoria Theatre was built over the top of an earlier theatre and hotel. Let's take a look at the stage auditorium from the front of the dress circle on the second level of the auditorium. The renowned Melbourne firm of Patterson Brothers were responsible for the decorative arts comprising the auditorium's cornices, mouldings, ornamental railings and stage boxes. The focal point of the auditorium was the drop scene, the curtain near the front of the stage that was used to mask changes of scenery behind. A circular scene depicted the Grand Canal in Venice on a summer's day, with gondolas taking fruit to the markets and St Mark's Cathedral looping out of the water. The Newcastle Morning Herald thought that, as a specimen of scenic power, this painted curtain surpassed anything of its kind in Australia. A large crimson curtain at the top of the drop scene concealed a long perforated water pipe. In the event of a fire, the stage could be soaked within a few seconds and saved from destruction. The panel above the stage represented Apollo, the Greek god of knowledge, art, music, poetry, sun and light, surrounded by nine female muses. Twelve dressing rooms and other storage rooms for props surrounded the stage proper, as well as staircases, fly galleries, painters' bridges and grid floors. The Victoria still boasts the tallest fly tower of any theatre in New South Wales. The audience entered through the north entrance off Perkins Street to reach seats in the ground floor stalls at the back of the auditorium. If their seats were in the upper circle, they got to the third tier of the theatre via a staircase. Let's see an actor's view of the auditorium from the stage. On the ground floor there was seating for 520 people in the front, middle and back stalls while there were seats for 270 people in the higher-priced dress circle. Upholstered tip chairs imported from the United States filled both these areas. The cheapest seats were in the upper circle, where there was space for 550 people on plain wooden bench seating. The latest lighting technology was used to illuminate the different parts of the theatre. Gas supplied the footlights at the front of the stage while a large sunlight suspended from the dome incorporated 100 burners to illuminate the building. For the people of late 19th century Newcastle, the Victoria Theatre was a symbol of civic pride and the industrial sophistication of the city. It was also a principal destination on the busy touring routes of international and national entertainment troops.